morning. Base at Yankee here. Uh, one of my viewers recently asked, uh, they wanted to know what I use for equipment for uh, cutting and splitting my firewood. I do about a, I burn about a quarter and a half a year. Um, most of the time I buy it cut and split. Uh, the folks that deliver it to me deliver it kind of on the larger side. Uh, I, have a, I have a small stove and uh, sometimes I have to uh, re-split some of the pieces because they're so big. Uh, but I enjoy getting it already processed. Uh, it saves me a lot of time and effort. But over the years, I've, I've burnt firewood since, uh, oh, maybe 1979. Um, <clears throat> I've gone from doing it by hand to renting a splitter, to owning a splitter, uh, getting rid of the splitter, and then going back to doing it by hand, and then now buying a pre-split, um, I've accumulated a number of tools. Uh, some I've inherited from my father, some I've bought, uh, and I've found over the years that uh, as your needs change, so does your need for certain tools. Uh, for example, I no longer own a chainsaw. It's just, it's just not necessary. Uh, there's many ways to get around it, it's just not worth the effort and the cost. So today I'm going to give you a little tour of what I use for tools, a little history on them, where I got them, uh, what, what purpose they serve for me, if at all. Um, some, some are mere, merely keepsakes, uh, but in any case, uh, let's get started and we'll go through it. Um, I've got some malls, some splitting splitting axes and um, some wedges, uh, sledges, uh, chopping blocks. Uh, anyway, we'll go through all this and then uh, hopefully you can come up with an idea of what works best for you. Uh, I would imagine everyone that burns is going to have a different need for different tools. So let's get started. So to start off, uh, we'll start off with the splitting tools. Um, this right here is my pride and joy. Uh, this is a Chopper 1 splitting axe. <clears throat> I bought this used in the 1980s. Uh, the man I bought it from says he couldn't make it work. Um, I haven't had a problem with it since the day I bought it. Uh, and because he was so disgruntled with it, he sold it to me for $8. I can't even begin to thank him to this day. Um, this thing goes for over $100, I think, right now. Um, it's got a nice, a nice blade on it. Um, I don't have to sharpen it much. I think I've done it once or twice, hit it, hit it with a file. But it has these cams that swing out. And the theory is that when you strike the wood, this blade goes in and that little lip catches it and pops the wood open. And yeah, it sounds weird, but it really does work. Um, I've replaced the springs here and these little piece of wire pieces a couple times. They still sell the pieces real, real reasonable. There are nice folks that run the place. Um, this was a, a gentleman's idea, and uh, I guess he patented it, and um, the son still manages the business. Um, I love this axe. I, I don't know what I would ever do without it. Um, and as you can see, the handle is still hasn't really had any banging up. I've never had to replace the handle. Um, so anyway, that's that. Um, then I picked up a, uh, about 20 years ago, I picked up this. And this was a, this was just a, uh, a single bit axe. I think I got it at one of the big box stores. I didn't pay much for it. Um, and you can see it's, it's been through a lot. I use this for cutting roots. I use it for a lot of different things. I, but I do not use it as a felling 
act. Um, I keep a dull blade on there intentionally. Uh, I don't have to worry about sharpening it. And when I split with this, it splits just fine. So that's that's my uh, that's my axe. Now I got my uh, I'll do my smaller ones here. I've got some an array of hatchets. Um, this one I got from an uncle. This was an old craftsman um, little doll. I've got uh, I've got some oil on it to uh, protect it. Um, <clears throat> I don't know if there's a number on it. It's just Craftsman. Um, very old. I can't date it. I'm not sure. But um, I use it once in a while. Not often. Then I got this uh, this Trooper. I use this when I'm using my electric log splitter. Um, it's handy if something needs just to be snapped off or whatever. And again, I don't I don't sharpen that. This got a little bit of an edge on it, but not much. It's mostly meant for impact and stuff. This S-wing. I bought this um, almost almost as a mistake. I think I got this. Um, it's a nice little axe, a hatchet. Um, works well, but there's no weight to it. Um, so it's like you're you're waving around a, a, a small stick or something, and uh, so I don't use it that often. I was going to use it for splitting kindlin, and <coughs> that that just never happened. So I went back to the store and I found this S-wing. Um, this is nice. This has got more weight to it. Um, it's got a nice swing. I'm splitting kindling. I'll show you later what I use it on. Um, I love this. Um, I could have bought two. That's how I, that's how much I like it. Um, in any case, um, there it is. So when I'm uh, when I'm splitting and I'm using wedges, uh, I have a variety of hammers depending on how bad the wood is and you know how much weight I need to throw at it. This is my go-to. This is about a 10-pounder. Um, I got this from my dad. It's the original handle on it. I taped it up a few times um, rather than replace the handle. It's not loose. It was just banged up and I wanted to preserve it. So I just threw some tape on there. Uh, and that's that's held on. That tape's been on there a couple years now. Uh, this big Bertha here, this thing this thing weighs in about 13 pounds um, and it's got an unusual head on it as you can see this works really well um, if I've got a, a piece of wood or something that I've got halfway open and maybe a knot is holding it or whatever I can ram this down that crack and that thing will blow it right open um, you can't swing it a lot of times at 13 pounds but you know it works so as you can see the difference in the actual splitting mall it's got a sharper point there so they both serve their own purpose and once in a while you get a wedge stuck or something and you just need to bang it out and so I picked up this uh, another S wing this is a uh, this is actually a blacksmith hammer but it works really well for uh, banging out wedges that are stuck. You know, I've got a point on it and stuff. So I use it actually quite a bit. Um, that's, a, that's a four pounder. And there's enough weight to it, so you know, it works pretty well. <clears throat> so while we're talking about splitting, uh, of course, wedges always come up. You know, some people use them, some people don't. Um, a lot of times I understand that uh, folks don't go for the really big chunks anymore. I've seen some tree companies just destroying them because they say there's no, there's no, there's no call for it. No one wants to do the work or whatever. Um, I always liked them because the, the wood in a, like a maple tree that was two or three foot across was so hard that once you did get it split, 
it would burn for a long time, a lot longer than just a limb or something. So I didn't mind doing the work for that. Um, these three on the left date back to my father's age. And I'm not sure, you know, there's no dates on them, but he said he had them for a very long time. This one has a six on it, which I'm assuming is the poundage. Uh, they're unbranded. This one has like a groove on it. And uh, these don't, these other two don't. And when I got them, they were mushroomed over like this, which is very dangerous. And you can see the, the edge, how this is ready to break off. You hit that with a hammer in a wrong way, that piece comes off like a bullet and goes right in your leg. Um, I got one here. You can see here, this is broken off, you know, and the same thing probably happened with that. Um, this, these I took into somebody and had them torch off the parts that were mushroomed over. Uh, so they're not really flushed, they're not new, uh, and I very seldom use it. This one I do use on occasion, but the, you can see the top is kind of spalling out like that. So they work well, uh, but I'm careful about it when I use them. This was one I bought maybe 30 years ago, and uh, I still have it. I've never taken the time to have it repaired, have that cut off. Uh, I just keep it. I don't use it, though. I just keep it. This one here, I, I tried, I had broke off a piece, tried grinding it down. Um, but again, I don't use that that often. Although, by the looks of it, I think I have recently. But then I bought this one. Uh, this is a newer one. I've only used that once or twice. That's a Husky. I think I got that at Home Depot. But, so I tend to use like this and this and maybe that, but um, I don't do, like I said, I don't do a lot anymore with this. Um, the only reason it all came up is because someone gave me a maple tree this year and I ended up with a lot of trunk pieces. Then some of them require a wedge. Uh, I'm going to be doing a video on that a little later. But uh, So along with the stuff that my father gave me came these. These are felling wedges. And as you know, um, when you're cutting down a tree and you make that initial cut in the back, um, <clears throat> usually today you put in these kind of wedges plastic and uh, that's made in Canada and and the reason you use this material is because if your saw kicks back and you catch it a bit of it it'll shatter like this and that's fine you know it's just plastic it shatters and and that's it nobody gets hurt in the old days they used steel and um, when the saw kicked back and hit one of these, and this thing spit out and went right into the hole that was created when you did this. So uh, these things will disable you. So they stopped using these. This one happens to be branded. This is uh, Warwood. There's a number one on it, and I'm not sure if that's the size or the weight. But then uh, I'm looking at this one. And there's no branding, but there's a three on it, so I'm assuming that's uh, that's size related. There's a hole in it. My dad says they used to have a piece of braided wire in a loop that went through the hole, and they could hang them on their belt. And there's a notch in the sides, if you can see that, where the wire would rest in there when this was slid into the slot on the tree. Um, it's, it's neat history, but uh, I've never used those things and don't plan on doing it. This, my wood stick. Um, this, this stick designates how wide my stove is. The stove door is from here to here. Um, I use it when I'm gauging my wood to make sure that 
the pieces I'm cutting are going to fit into the stove. Now there's a notch here. This is 16 inches to this notch and then 18 inches to the length. And the 18 inch piece I can fit in the stove if I turn it like that. Uh, about because I got into the one winter I got in there and I was going to throw a piece of wood, a big piece of wood in the stove. And I got one end in and it ignited and I couldn't get the other end in. And I had to run through the house with a burning piece of wood and vowed that that would never happen again. So um, that's why I developed a stick. I suggest that uh, if you folks have been in that same position, that might be a good idea to try. Chopping blocks. Um, what you're looking at is a, um, a homemade chopping block. It's, I simply used uh, off-cut pieces of uh, two by four and two by six. I glued and screwed them together, cut them all the same height, and made this block. And then I made this uh, taller wall on the back and on the sides of it. I can sit on this stool and use that uh, hatchet and chop my kindling wood. And this is something I usually do inside in the garage in the spring. Um, I, I, cut, I cut like poplar and stuff like that, um, lighter woods, and I get it nice and dry, like maybe over a course of a year. Uh, in fact, I cut this stuff already, and I won't split it until spring. Um, and then I fill barrels, haul them back out, put them in the shed, and then uh, when fall comes, I'm all set to go. I find it's a lot easier to uh, to actually sit on the stool and chop it. It's very relaxing and uh, it's not a strain on your back. You're not hunched over on the ground or something, you know, which is kind of ridiculous. Uh, next to it, you will see a cross buck. This cross buck is about uh, 18 inches wide and obviously holds like one or two logs. Um, it's made from 4x4 four four material that was pressure treated and I've got three uh, threaded rods holding it together. That's a three-quarter inch galvanized threaded rod. There's some square washers on there and then um, square nuts holding it all together. I believe the hardware was cast off from the old power lines uh, you know, telephone poles and stuff like that. Uh, my dad made it, and it's it's in dire need of being rebuilt. And maybe this winter I'll get to that. But um, I use it on occasion. Most of the time, it just sits outside, being pressure treated. It's lasted a number of years. I've owned it for I don't know, almost 40 years now. Uh, and there's a piece of two by four on there. Uh, that's that I use for like a sacrificial piece of wood. If you're using a chainsaw and you cut that thing in between the two posts and you break through the, the bottom of that uh, piece of wood, you're going to hit that uh, threaded rod. And if you look closely, there's some nicks in there. And I'm sure he picked it up a few times and probably had a few choice words for it. So I, I just throw in a piece of wood there. And if I don't have the 2 by 4 it might be a pine branch or something that's, you know, doesn't really matter, um, just to save the, the chainsaw blade. Of course, I don't use a chainsaw anymore, so now it's kind of, I, I put the, put a piece up there and maybe use a handsaw to cut it or whatever, but I keep it around just to, because of who it made it and, you know, just nostalgic. And then I have a log splitter. This is an electric log splitter. It runs on a 110. Uh, I can run an extension cord out to the firewood area and set up the bench out there, run it out there. Or in the winter time, if I've got some pieces that need to be broken down, I can do it right in the garage. No fumes, no gas, don't have to worry about that. Um, this is a godsend. 
Um, it's one and three quarter horsepower. I got this thing used, um, and for as much as I use it, it is, I think it's well worth the money. Uh, my grandsons can run it. Uh, there's a safety feature on here where you have to have two hands for operation. One hand to hold this lever down, and then you push this with your other hand. So your hands are free. You don't have to worry about getting caught in there. It can take a, a little over a 20 inch piece of wood, which is longer than what I need. As I'm using my stick, you can see that, uh, you know, I'm like here. So it, it works really well for me. Um, I keep it here in, in the garage, and uh, so it's always dry, ready to go, and you know, that's it. Uh, all in all, I probably only spent uh, less than $100 on the tools, or maybe, I'll, I'm sorry, maybe $150 on the tools that I actually bought. Um, <clears throat> but this, I think, is, is well worth the effort. Um. Now I have a couple of old saws. Uh, not sure the age of this. I got this from my dad. Um, it's a two-man saw. It's got a the pieces of wood there is a handmade wood sheath, and there's some dried-out leather straps that went on it. And rather try rather than trying to restore it, I just saved it as is. The, uh, the pattern, the tooth pattern is called a perforated lance. And I understand, if I'm correct, that this is made for cutting soft wood. This crosscut saw used for cutting soft wood, um, probably pine, hemlock, stuff like that. Um, so you can just imagine the effort that had to go into, uh, you know, using something like that. Looks to be about five feet long. Never really measured it, but um, I'm glad I don't have to use that today. Now uh, here's a second one. Um, this is a Tuttle design. The tooth pattern is Tuttle, and I believe this is a cross cut also. Uh, I'm not sure if it's for softwood or hardwood. Uh, my guess is it would be hardwood, but I'm not totally sure. Uh, I do understand that uh, this design, this tooth pattern design, goes back over 150 years. So that doesn't necessarily mean that this particular saw is that old, but you know, it's a good old saw. Um, they still make these today. There's a company in Seneca Falls, New York, that makes these saws. You can buy them online, new. Um, these typically these run a couple hundred dollars you know. so if you're ever worried about uh, the economy collapsing and not being able to get gas for your saw maybe this is an option for you and if you uh, don't happen to have anyone to be on the other end of that saw this is a one-man saw and this looks like the Tuttle design also um, there was a hole at the end of the saw. You can see where I use it to screw it into the into the wood. And you could buy an optional blade, I mean a handle rather, that stuck up on the end. So if you could snag someone to help you, you can cut with it. But um, this would be good for you know, a single person. And that's about three feet long. Again, I don't know the age and there's no branding on it. But um, it's a good saw. Then there's another one here on the wall. Um, same thing. It's a good saw here, you know, for cutting wood. Uh, certainly get a workout. I don't use them, I just kind of, I like them for the decoration. And lastly, uh, this is a small collection of bow saws that I have. Uh, this is about a 20 inch cut. Um, in looking at it, I'm 
kind of guessing it may have been handmade, uh, but I'm really unsure. You know, there, there are some things that, that make me think it was machine made because it, it's so well done, but then, you know, when I look at the connector up here, uh, it makes me think it's handmade. Uh, in any case, here it is. And uh, I haven't used this. I keep it loose, which is the way you want to store them. And you, you just tighten this, pulls, when you tighten this, it pulls the top end in, and it makes your blade stiffer. You do that, and then it's good. A uh, long time ago, they used to use this for doing uh, furniture and small projects. Uh, you'd find them in workshops. Not so much cutting firewood, but this is what they used instead of a handsaw. This, this has got some nice detail in it. Uh, this, I think, I think is probably handmade too, or an expensive one at the time. Um, again, I don't use this. I've got it loose. Um, it's a, it looks like an aggressive blade on here. Um, I did use this maybe 34 years ago. I used it to uh, try it out, and it worked surprisingly well. Uh, I need to uh, coat this blade to stop the rust, but um, that's, that's nice. I just kind of keep this because, you know. This is a 27 inch, uh, same thing. This looks like the same, same brand or the same maker as this. These uh, pieces at the top connect in the same way. It's like a, it's like a rivet, a handmade rivet here. So I'm really not sure, uh, again, you know, who might have made it or the age of it. And I can't find any information on it on the saw itself, but um, I've never used this one either. But I like to keep them. It looks like it's been through a lot of use. So, in any case, that's what I have for uh, wood cutting equipment. Uh, I hope that uh, this one, this video will encourage you to uh, get out there and, and get some exercise doing your own firewood. And it, don't be worried about not having all the brand new equipment and stuff. You can do it. Um, if someone from a hundred years ago had this equipment, they would have thought they died and went to heaven. Uh, you don't need you don't need to spend thousands of dollars just to keep your house. That's crazy. Uh, just get out there and, and use what you have. And if you need to get something, really think about it before you buy it. Get something that uh, you know you're going to have for a number of years. Um, don't be afraid to buy a quality piece, but uh, be real selective about what you get uh, because you get what you pay for. Some of the stuff you can make, like the chopping block, the saw block, you know, it won't cost you that much money. And uh, anyway, get out there and try it. Uh, I'll be doing a video soon on splitting the firewood which I'll be using tools that you've seen today. Not all of them, but two of them. And uh, I don't have that much left of the chunks, but we'll get a little video out on that pretty soon. So, in the meantime, thank you for watching. Um, I certainly hope you click on the subscribe button at the bottom. And uh, there's a little little bell next to it. You click on that, and every time I put a video out, you'll get an email. Um, so until then, um, thanks a lot and uh, have a good day.